to know when you needed to put on a good performance, okay? Because you didn't know who was calling. And then she was so good, she could hang up, oh, okay, yeah, bye-bye. Now, where was I? <laughs> Please, someone else call, quick. Someone else call. So, the tone is huge, and we all have to do that. You, your coworkers, if you're a manager, talking to our employees about how they do that. Um, tone, people, I notice, answer the phone very quickly. They were calling Chevron, this is Brad, how can I? Oh, yeah. Hi, is this the Chevron station? This is Chevron, how can I help you? You know, they talk so fast. Sometimes they don't use their name. I think your name should be used. Absolutely. When you pick up a phone call, you're trying to create an emotional connection with people. You're not just a place that sells gas. So when you answer the phone, you definitely want to use your name. You want to say, thank you for calling Chevron. This is Jordan. How can we help you out? Hey, Jordan, how's it going? Because now I know your name. It's kind of that emotional connection. You're trying to create that engagement. Names are huge. A quick answer on a phone call. You don't want to let the phone ring and ring and ring and ring. It looks like you're not open, like you don't care about their business. Um, so I think that's all big stuff. This is so sad. Look at this. Only 14% of what people remember or take out of your conversation comes from the actual words that you use. You could tell them something they don't want to hear, but if you do it with a smile in your voice and you sound friendly about it, they're a lot more likely to be pleased and happy with you, even if you're not telling them what they want to hear. Sometimes we have to deliver bad news, but your tone is huge. Now, in person, everybody here performs a certain amount of their job uh, in person. So we're going to move beyond the phone and go into in person. In person, there's three things that you use to communicate with. What do you think the biggest one is in person? How do people judge you? In body person? language. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. What's body language? The way you conduct your, your mannerisms and your, just what you're saying to them without mm -hmm. saying anything. <laughs> uh, I can help you. Uh, just, just the marker. That's all you want to buy. Dollar seventy-five. Your card. Go ahead. Just go ahead and swipe. <laughs> Need your receipt. Okay, that's body language. That's that's body language, and we're laughing because you've all seen that happen, right? I mean, you go to the grocery store, you go to a market, you go to a restaurant. The biggest thing people remember about you is the stuff that you do with your body, things that you're picking up, how you're looking at someone, how you're dressed, uh, maybe a name badge that you have on, your hair, your glasses, how quick you move, or um, if you've ever been to a business and let's say it's a, a server coming over. You guys ready to order? Okay, I'll give you a couple minutes. I'll be over here just holler when you're ready. No sense of urgency. Just if you walk slow, like you're kind of dragging, zero yeah. sense of urgency. I'll give you a ticket on that. Okay. So body language is huge, huge. 55% of what someone thinks about you is through your body language. Let me give you a really quick example. Uh, Jordan, come on down here to the center. Erica, come on down. And Eric, please. So, uh, just move this out of our way here. Guys, are you going to go right there up against the screen? Please. And you ever been to Walmart? Where's the closest Walmart? Cedar? Cedar. And it's a Walmart super center, right? So you got the grocery store and the poles on one half. All right, so we're going to be at Walmart. You're going to be working register number one right over here. You're register number two right here. And register number three. Beautiful. So uh, we're going to say that uh, you all have your register going on. You all have about the same number of people in line at your register. So it's not like 10 people are here and the guys have nobody. All right, you're, you're all about equal. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be the customer and I got my shopping cart. And I just want to know if you've ever been to a grocery store or like Walmart, if you've ever done this. So I've got full of, I'm full of food and clothes, whatever I'm buying, and I come up and I do this. <laughs> Are you still open? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever done that uh -huh. when you've gone to a store, you've looked at the three, four, two people mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. and looked at each one of them and then tried to figure out who you wanted to go to? Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, see the one that's going faster. Like, yeah. You, yeah. 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 you know what that is? It's body language, right? Because, mm -hmm. oh man, he's hustling. Look at how fast he's moving. I got ice cream. Yeah. And I want to get home. It's hot out today. I'm going to go to him. All right, what else might you look for? 
how good appearance is how they look. How they look? Are they young? Are they older? Are they you know just friendly? Are they talking? Or are they just you know? Body language. Do they look like someone that's friendly? You know, are they visiting a little bit? Do they do they do they have a smile on their face? You know, or do they look grumpy or crabby? You're like, oh god, no, I went to her last week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people, we all do this. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I'm always looking at people. You go to a store. I can guarantee you that I'm looking at the cashier and I'm like, which one looks friendly? You know, I want someone that's going to move too, but I like somebody that's friendly. Mm -hmm. If someone looks crabby, that's not the lane I want to go in. Well, and if they're confident in what they're doing also, because if you got somebody that's like, oh crap, and what number, <laughs> you know. Yeah. 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 They look like they know what they're doing, that exactly. like they're intelligent to, to work the register. Mm -hmm. That they know how to bag stuff. That you don't put the bleach oh. in with my buns. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Like I, you yeah. know, want someone that knows knows the basics. People look at all that stuff. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee in your business, people are looking at you or your employees and deciding. Do they want to? Do they want to come up to you? Are they hoping you're the one that's going to ring them up? Are they hoping you're the next one that's available? I, I can guarantee you. The biggest thing people will walk away with your business. After they walk out, they're like, wow, he was really friendly. Wow, she was nice. Boy, he was really helpful. Mm -hmm. Or if you're up and down, maybe you're the only person at your business. And let's just say, you know, some days you have good days, some days you have bad days. Wow, she was really friendly today. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been to a business where there's someone that's like that? It just kind of depends on their mood. That's not, that's not the kind of business that you want to offer, right? You want to be consistently good. And that's why you have to sometimes be that actor. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're having a bad day, you just gotta put that smile on and, and, and be friendly. Let's give these guys a round of applause. So do you think it would be appropriate if you say you chose that friendly clerk? You know, when because is it right to say, you know what, I appreciate your friendliness or Absolutely. Is, is that yes. gonna help or make it worse? Uh, no, I th I think it's so important when you get good service, especially in a in a small community where you maybe know that person. You know how nice is that for you to look at them and say, you know what, I just want to thank you. Every time I come here, you are always so friendly. You are always so helpful. I really appreciate that. Think about if you got that compliment by someone, you know, here. Wouldn't, wouldn't that just make your day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, th I think what happens is when people get compliments like that, they're like, wow. You know, someone does notice, mm -hmm. and I think people want to try harder then, you know? They don't want to disappoint, they don't want to let, let right. you down. Um, people, people have said that to me sometimes, like, oh, people sometimes after class, attendees, they'll come up after class and be like, oh man, I just love your presentation. I can't wait till you come back again next time. Mm -hmm. Well, then the next time I come back, I'm thinking, what? Your uh, pressure's on. Well, the yeah. pressure's on, <laughs> right? I can't let anybody down. I mean, I got I can't even. I can't be below what I did last time. Like, I've, got to, I've got to reach a little bit higher, and it pushes me to want to do more. And I think a lot of people operate with that mentality. When people say good things about you, you're like, okay, you know, I got to keep doing a little bit more, and, and that's good. And in a small community, you can do that so easily because you probably know a lot of the, the mm -hmm. folks that work in the businesses. You know, well, and sometimes the people working by them can hear that and think, hmm. Point. That's the other thing. It's like, wow, why is Sherry's getting compliments? What am oh, I, yeah. you know? I have a question for you. Of course. Kind of on this. Um, so, like, managing people, sometimes your employees will have a bad day, and their customer service isn't what it should be or their attitude. How would you go about correcting that? Well, I think, you know, I could do a whole class on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, this um, person's having a bad day. They're breaking up with their boyfriend or, you know, they just got in a fight with their best friend or their kids in trouble at school or something, you know. You know, I think it, I think it, um, it really stems from the culture that you create in your company. Uh, I'll give you a great example. I've got a, a client, it's a, um, it's a hotel actually up in uh, Wisconsin I do a lot of work with. And the family that owns this hotel is really big on customer service. And the minute someone joins that hotel's team, whether you're working in the restaurant, you're working at the counter at the front desk, or you're a housekeeper, they tell the employees that, look, you can never have a bad day here. You are a performer. And they've gone so far as on the entrance that all the employees enter through, they had an artist come and paint words on the back of the employee entrance door. And it says backstage entrance. Oh. Backstage entrance. Oh. I love this, right? Because yeah. you get where I'm going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, the minute you walk through that door, I've got to have you on 
And they do regular training classes, kind of like what we're doing here today, to remind all the employees how important it is. Nobody here has a good day every day. I'm with you. I don't have good days every day. And I think, you know, letting our employees know that, look, no one walks in here having a perfect day. Mm -hmm. Life isn't perfect. Right. You know, my back's a little achy today. You know, or uh, I'm trying to think, how am I going to pay this bill when I get home? And we're all in that world. But when you come through those doors, you got to be 100% because our customer just doesn't care and you're a performer. And, and a lot of that comes through coaching and, and talking with the employees. I think you do get to a point, though, where you give some opportunities and you try. Sometimes, sometimes that person may not, may not be the right fit for that, for that line of work, too. I, I've had to have those conversations when I ran businesses. Mm -hmm. There were some employees that I had to sit down and I'd given chances and I tried and we've talked and talked and talked. And sometimes it's sitting down talking to people saying, you know, I mean, it, it, you may not enjoy it. Not everyone is cut out for customer service. Okay. Jeannie, you, you'd said, hey, there's yeah. some days like, you know, I've served I, for 20 some years. Right. I've, I'm, my smile is getting wore out. I'm a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, like, I get it. I have a lot of friends that could never work customer service. You know, I one of my buddies, He's, he's an artist, and he paints pic paintings, and he's so talented at what he does. But the guy's got some attitude, right? I mean, and he knows that. I would never recommend him to go work in one of the businesses that you have, because he would never be a good fit for standing in front of people trying to sell or deliver good customer service. It's not his strong suit, all right? Probably like a lot of us, wouldn't be good artists. I mean, I could never do the work that he does. Okay, now looking at some of your pigs. <laughs> I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all have our strong suits, and sometimes you have to have those difficult conversations with people and say, look, you know, if you really don't enjoy this work, or if you don't look forward to it most days, you know, maybe there's something different out there that you'd be better at. Now, sometimes businesses have the ability to say, hey, you know what? We've got some stuff you can do in the back of the room. We're going to have you package cheese, or we're going to have you go in the back and work in the office, and you're going to work on the computer, doing accounting stuff, or, right. or processing payments. And hey, that's great if our business has that ability to, to reshift that person over into another area. Because um, sometimes people are just not in the right job. They're just not in the right position. It's not for them. And to try to talk them in to being friendly and coming in with a smile every day, I don't have to talk people into it. You've got to come in with the right attitude. Mm -hmm. 